explore the saltwater fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bike. Dolphin in the boat! Oh my God. Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Alright, it's early morning. We're rigging up. We're heading towards the inlet. We're gonna wet some lines, try and bring home some food to the family. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, everybody, we'll see you out on the water. All right, folks, this morning we are out of Boca Inlet. Sun's a little bit up over the horizon by now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a drone spoon on the planer see if we can get a hookup I've had several people ask me hey can you troll a drone on a planer the answer is always yes so we're going to put it to the test and see if we can get somebody to nibble on it we're letting out a planer with brig again you don't want to go too fast when you're letting your planer out with braid because the planer is really sensitive and if you have a lot of drag from your lure, it'll trip your planer. Drone spoons tend to not have too much drag on them, so we'll see. If I'm going too fast, I just let off my throttle. That way I make sure the weight of the planer is dipping down so that it sets itself. And then we'll slowly ease the boat in forward and make sure that the planer sets. All right, so I think that should be good enough. All right, now I know that my planer is not set. What I'm gonna do, I got my boat in idle. I'm gonna put the reel in free spool, let it let down a little bit until I get some slack. Once you've got some slack, you can let out a little bit of line. And then you slowly ease forward. And you'll see if your planer will grab. Looks like it's grabbed this time. There we go. When you get that bend, that means your planer is grabbed. Your rod isn't really bent over well. Your planer's not set. All right, you hook in your tether. And blam, we're trolling. All right. Now we're gonna pick up the speed. You control a drone spoon kind of fast. So we're gonna do probably about eight knots and uh, see if we can get a hookup. Got that rod bent over like that. Here's where we're trolling. About seven, a little over seven knots.
nice little kingfish on the drone spoon. That should answer your questions if you can troll a drone on the planer. What I want to do now is I want to show you how to hook a drone spoon to a wire leader just like this. To do this, you're going to need about 16 to 18 inches of wire, your drone spoon, Haywire twist tool if you like to use it, which I do. If you don't know how to use it, I have a video on it. Check it out. And you're going to need a pair of split ring pliers. Now, when I say split ring pliers, I'm talking about it because it's got this little tooth right here. And it will open up the ring that is on the end of your drone spoon. I'll show you why you need that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make haywire twists on either end of our wire leader. So I'll send it through the solid state of the haywire twist tool, wrap it around, and put it through the little channel. And I'm gonna make a loop, and I'm gonna give it about eight to nine twists. You want that wire to always be threaded on properly. All right, now that we got that, we will in our tag, and we're gonna do some barrel wraps. All right, now we got plenty of barrel wraps, good to go. So to break that off, you just bend your wire leader, your little tag end, you bend that back and forth until it snaps off. And what this will do is that will make a non-sharp little edge right here that you can run your fingers over. Perfect, good to go. All right, now we're gonna make another haywire twist on the other end. Okay, so we've got two haywire twists on either end of our leader. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook the drone spoon up to one end of it using the split ring pliers. So what you do is you stick it through and you want to pinch it down and you see how it opens up that split ring? That's what you're looking for. Now. You take the loop of your haywire twist and you put it in there. You release it and then you just pull it back and you wind it on as if you're putting a key on your key ring. And there you have it. That is how you use the split ring pliers to get your wire leader hooked up to your drone spoon. All right, we're gonna get back to it, see if we can nab us another one before the, uh, it's time to quit trolling for today. Just caught that 
to talk a little bit about what happened today and what made this fishing trip successful. Started out with a game plan. I said, hey, I got some people interested in knowing if you can troll a drone spoon on a planter. My answer is yes, of course. And I set out to prove that you can get the hookup with a spoon on a planter. Stuck with it, got the hookup. We got a kingfish. We're going home with dinner. Like I've always said, it only takes one fish to make that trip successful. And that is exactly what happened. We're going home, the family is gonna eat good tonight. So I hope this episode answers the question of if you can troll a drone spoon on a planer. The answer is most definitely yes. If the kingfish were more thick, I'm sure they would be biting it more often than not. Right now we're in a lull, the kingfish are offshore spawning, but they're always around. They're just not super thick as they would be in other times of the year. But hey, we got lucky. Can't complain about that at all. We were able to put on a great show and prove that the drone spoon is an effective tool when planer trolling. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little bit about planter trolling with a drone spoon. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.